Right. Well, it's never a good idea to leave a dog inside a car on a sunny day. And as summer approaches, we'll hear the warnings. Here to talk more about summer pet safety is veterinarian Dr. Ian Sandler with a new friend, Rowan. This is Rowan. She's come to join me here today. It's love. Uh, Rowan is lovely. So, you know, we hear this every summer, and yet every summer mistakes are made. You, people think, oh, well, if I roll down the window, the dog will be fine. That's not the case. Think of your car as a pressure cooker. And when your pet's in there, even if the windows are down a little bit, it can get so hot so quickly. So even early in the morning or later in the afternoon, it's the humidity, it's the temperature. There's so many factors. And really, they're in this almost cooker cooker box like uh, environments you've got to be really careful you know, just like humans it, it, heat and dehydration and things that we have to watch for but what are you specifically watching for in a dog if they have it you know if you're concerned about that well during hot days they'll perspire by panting so oftentimes you'll see your, your pet panting which is sure. which is pretty normal but if it's too hot for you outside it's definitely too hot for them make sure they've got access to water make sure they've got access to shade giving them ice cubes really helps so there's lots of things that you can do around that you also want to be really careful if you're running with them or yeah. on roller blades or a bike because the asphalt will heat up very, very quickly as well. And again, however hot it is outside, the ground is usually 10 to 15 degrees hotter. So be careful because they can really scald and wound their paws as well. Oh my goodness. And this year we've been hearing a lot about ticks. Ticks is a huge issue. So obviously in Canada, seasonally, just to sort of step back, heartworm disease is endemic, meaning it's here. So Ugh. preventatives are really, really important seasonally through June to November dogs need to be on some kind of preventative medication. But ticks are a huge issue because of the climate change that we're seeing. Okay, so, so which is more of them, more cases? That's correct. So we're seeing more migratory bird pattern changes. We're seeing a huge increase in the, in the deer population in the wild. And we're seeing, obviously, the urbanization of our cities. So as we're moving, as our cities are moving out into the country, we're getting closer and closer to those environments. So for example, March was one of the hottest months on record. So we're not seeing those deep freeze winters that we used to. And in November, it to be very cold. Now you can be Not jogging so in December. So those kind of environmental changes are, are really allowing us to see this huge increase in ticks. How effective are these um, medications for ticks and well, I'm happy to say the newer products are just amazing. There's topical products, there are yes. oral products. Some are monthly, some are every three months. Some of the topical products, you need to be a little bit careful if you have cats in your house as well, because they're not appropriate for use in cats. But a lot of these products, in terms of actually getting the ticks off your pet, are quite useful. Now, most of these products will still um, allow, if you will, for the tick to attach okay. to the body, but they will allow for the tick to drop off very, very quickly. So they'll work within a few hours to several hours, meaning that usually for transmission of Lyme's disease can take up to a day or two. Oh boy. And so we know that these products will hopefully get those ticks off before that transmission period occurs. Okay. All right, Dr. Sandler, thank you nice for coming in. Nice to be here, in. Beth.